Hey everybody, welcome to Bones Collector, and I've been playing a game this week that I wanted to tell you about, and I mentioned this game in another video, I forget which one it was, but um, the game is Ishtar by Bruno Cathala and Evan Singh. Bruno Cathala is becoming one of my favorite board game designers. I'm respecting his work uh, as I play his games. We also have in our library Yamatai and Five Tribes by Bruno Cathala, and I think maybe King Domino? But uh, yeah, his work is becoming something that we really, really enjoy. Now, in Ishtar, the theme of this game is about the Queen's Gardener became so frustrated with trying to grow vegetation in the desert that he fell to his knees weeping and his tear, one of his tears worked his way through the sand and the goddess Ishtar took pity on him and felt sorry for him and his sadness, pushed his tear back up through the sand and made it a bountiful water supply and he swore he'd make the best gardens ever because of her kindness. So you are a gardener trying to build a flower garden in the desert and you do that by selecting these vegetation tiles off this board. And it's pretty cool because this board has, I think there's three different shapes of tiles and you have these small boards that go on top and you can mix these up and they have a shape on them that tells you which shape of tile to put on there. So that's kind of random at the beginning of the game and you, it changes each game. So you just mix those up and you can put them out so that uh, you don't know how that board is going to be laid out. So that's pretty cool. And then you take this little watering can and the first player will just pick a pile and select a tile and that's where the watering can starts. And then each player moves the watering can one space and it takes the next tile and you go about the board like that. If you don't want that tile you can go to the next one but it's going to cost you a gem and that gets to be expensive so you don't want to do that unless you absolutely have to. I have done it in the game because I felt like I needed to but you don't like it because the gems are so hard to come by. So you select a tile and you're going to place it on this modular board. Now this modular board can be laid out obviously in any configuration you like also and that makes it pretty cool because uh, we changed it around a little bit this play and let me mention we've played this game three times only we haven't played it a whole bunch and I've liked it more and more each time it is an area control tile placement game and it feels a lot like chess when you're playing because you have to really think about your move and when you select that tile you're trying to build them around these fountains because these different color fountains have different point totals and you get uh, there's two more purple in this box so you put those out randomly also each game so it changes the game and I, I respect and love that kind of thing in board games and this game we played in about an hour so that hit, uh, hits our time frame because we really like that and it gives your brain a, a very good workout and we enjoy that too but you're going to place these tiles on this board building these flower beds and you're going to place your assistants of which you start out with two on your player board two assistants and you're going to place assistant on that flower bed only if you have a tile with the assistant icon and you can place him on that icon and any flowers you connect to that are going to be yours to score at the end of the game. So you're trying to make the biggest flower garden. The easiest mistake you can make in this game is that you cannot connect these fountains with the tiles. You have to kind of think of each fountain as being electrified and these tiles were metal and if you touch them together from two different fountains you'd get a shock. So you can't touch those and it's it's an easy mistake to make. We made it several times and had to take our turn back because we said, hey, wait a minute, those, those tiles are touching and those fountains are connected and you cannot do that. So that I wanted to warn you about right off the top of the bat. And I really, really enjoy this game. You're gonna place those tiles on these desert tiles. You cannot place them on, um, let me see if I got another one here. No, are yeah. they all here? They're here. No, let me, yeah. On each one of these desert tiles, there's a place for a fountain and spaces for gems. And then if you have, one of these tiles with, is what I wanted to show you, with one of these stone tablets, you can't place your tile over that either. So you can't cover those up. But you can score for being near those, and I'll tell you about that here in a minute. There's ways, and you have to think really hard about how you're doing this, because you want to collect gems that are going to give you skills off your player board, and gems that will buy these tree carts that give you victory points at the end of the game, and then also on each one of those is one of these green trees you see on the board and you place that near your garden and get two points for it if you've done that skill on your player board. So it's a combination of working that player board and acquiring skills with laying down tiles and 
building the biggest flower beds around fountains that you're going to have the the largest flower bed and score that fountain and then acquiring these tree cards put trees on the board near your assistants so that you can score two points for those if you get it that skill on your player board which has two levels of skills so the skill icon is like a starburst and you have to place a vegetation tile with a starburst on it in order to even buy one of these skills which costs you two gems and there's two levels the bottom level you have to complete before you do the top level so that's how those work and it gives you extra points at the end of the game it gives you special benefits during the game and I tell you the more I play it the more I like it again it's something you can get done in an hour uh, give your brain a really tough workout mentally and that's a lot of fun folks and that's Ishtar from Bruno Kafala and I wanted to tell you about uh, the components of the game it's a beautiful box cover by the way don't you think and then also you get a beautiful insert everything fits in here nice and tight tucked away very nicely and neatly I really appreciate that nice rule book it's an excellent game and it's a puzzle that doesn't bore us and it doesn't get old for us and that's called Ishtar by Bruno Kafala and Evan Singh. So yeah, if you get a chance, give it a play. Or if you trust my judgment, pick it up, add it to your gaming library, and have a great time. And listen, I love every one of you. Keep on gaming. It's the best hobby on the planet. Make sure you subscribe. And thank you to Broken Meeple and Luke Hector for showing my promo at the end of his uh, Top 100 games. Well, I think 91 through 100. Thank you, Luke. Uh, we appreciate that shout-out very much. And I'll see you next time on The Bones Collector. Bye-bye.